Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Illustration Masterclass. Today we're looking at the artist Michael Whelan, and we're going to look at some of the uh, design decisions and some of the design principles in his work, see what it is we can learn about his work. Um, as usual, if you want some exclusive additional tutorials, I have a link to my Patreon below, um, and I also have a ton of free stuff here on YouTube that you can check out of other artists. Uh, now, I'm a huge fan of the like, old fantasy artists from the 1970s and 80s. People like Frazetta, um, I guess you could put Brom or Mobius, and Michael Whelan, and maybe even H.R. Geiger uh, into that category of like fantasy, dark fantasy uh, type work. Um, so, Michael Whelan is, he's done some fantasy book illustrations, and this is one of the pieces he did for the Oathbringer. Books, which was done by uh, Brandon Sanderson, I believe. So let's take a look at this and see what we can notice. Now the first thing it is that I notice when I look at this piece is, is that um, there's, a, there's a, a decision that is made early on in the piece uh, to, to throw the balance of the image off. And by that I mean an artist has a decision that they're going to make at the very beginning. Is this going to be an image that is very symmetrical? Meaning, is it going to be the same on either side? Or is it going to be asymmetrical? Um, and how are you going to create balance or a sense of imbalance in the image? Uh, now, there's a, there's a use of balance here that I think is really interesting. Um, and he uses it very well, which is he uses a giant shape of this cloud that's coming over the horizon it's just about to block the sun out and then you have this figure over here on the right as a counterbalance to that uh, who is obviously much smaller than uh, than the cloud itself and there's some interesting things that he's doing with the way that he positions things right so if I take this if I drop this into grayscale and I, I do a quick little draw over of this, I notice a couple of different things. We could say that the cloud is pushing very heavily to the right of this image. It's pushing our eye with these leading lines. The way that these forms are churning, it's pointing us towards the character, right? And as it's pointing us towards the character, we then arrive at the character and we get a hard stop, meaning this this almost vertical line right here stops our eye from going any further to the right. And we know that's the case because we also see that there's also leading lines that are coming from the bottom of this cloud and all throughout here that are all pointing us at this, this, center, uh, this center point of, or this focal point of tension, which is right here in this right thirds of the image which is pretty much where it is that he sits. And we can, we can tell that he wants us to look there because he has a whole bunch of intersecting elements that are all taking our eye to this area, right? There's lots of different elements that are pointing us in that direction, including the cloud. So he was trying to create this image that had this uh, this dynamic image of a of a man almost against the storm. That's that's what it sounds. That's what it seems like to me whenever I look at the story of this. If I pull this back into color, uh, what do I see? I see he's holding up his sword to the cloud. And it's almost like he's cut a line through the cloud with his sword, right? And so there's kind of this this dynamic uh, conflict that is going on between this giant storm on the horizon and then this figure over here on the right. Uh, so that's the way he uses the elements of balance. Uh, and those are things it is that you, that you can play around with in your compositions, making things uh, balanced in a different way, but also scale, right? So if we look at it in terms of a graphic element, it's a, he's playing around with balance, balance of the different elements in the image. But if we look at it in terms of scale, then we, we can start to understand that a little bit better, right? Because we have this cloud structure 
is moving along the horizon and it's huge, it's massive. And then we have this figure over here in the foreground that is, uh, you know, it's very small compared to this cloud. And so there's a dynamic element to it. Now to sell the point that this is a giant cloud, what does he do? He puts another figure way back here in the distance. And he also puts this, uh, this cloud is, is about to cover the sun up. So it's about to cover the sun up and uh, that's how gigantic this storm is. That's how formidable it is. It's gonna block out the entire sky. And uh, it's just, it's such an awesome, beautiful image. Um, that, same, that same scale is also represented in the color, in the color schemes. If we look over here, what are all these colors? These are all uh, blue colors, right? Uh, they're, they're darker as we get closer to where the storm is. And then as we get to the actual storm, we, we have this ominous light from the lightning that's inside the eye of the storm as it's coming over the horizon. And then over here on the right side, we have, uh, we have this uh, sunlit scene that is being engulfed by this giant cloud, by this hurricane-like uh, cloud that's coming over the horizon. And then down in here, he's mixing these colors of, of these red and orange that he puts here. You know, he puts red and orange over here, and then he puts this blue over here. And so it's creating this really interesting conflict, and he bridges those colors with purple and with his orange here in these, in these other elements. Beautiful image. Let's go ahead and let's jump to the next one. I've only got two more for you. All right, so this one is, uh, I, I don't know what this is from, uh, but I do love it. I think it's a really cool piece. And there's a lot of different elements that he has going on. This is something that I talk a lot about on this channel, is that you can tell that somebody knows what they're doing by the way that they organize the different elements uh, that they have to organize. Um, so for example, with this piece, we can see uh, there is some converging lines going on here. Right? You have this line, you have this line, and you have this line. And they're basically creating an A, which is interesting. An A, or you could say a, a sideways triangle, depending on which way it is that you're looking at it. And what is within that triangle? The focal point, which is, which is our character here. And of course, it's not a coincidence that the background that this character is sitting on, that, that this framing device is made out of, mostly falls into shadow. It mostly falls into shadow, right? And then we have these other elements here and here that keep our eye from drifting too far to the left or to the right. If he had kept this an open sky in this area, then it would feel empty. And our eye would naturally go up to where that empty spot is. And the reason why that is, is because there would be an element of contrast because you would have all this detail down here in the main part of the image, and then you would have no detail up here. And so your eye would naturally move up and to the right. Um, so he's very well organized with the way he puts together his images. He puts all the detail, all the levels of interest exactly where he wants you to look. Now it's, it's also very natural for us to always look at a human being and to look at the human face whenever it is that we're looking at an illustration. Uh, so that's also something that plays into this. Um, but notice that he, he himself is contrasting in terms of color to the background. These shadows that are cast on these pillars back here, uh, these shadows are all in a, in a dark blue. And he is in a red, red and white. That's what he's in. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the next one. This one, oh man. This is kind of where he starts to get into like the darker fantasy stuff. He has stuff that's like really inspired from like H.R. Geiger that I love. Um, 
I think I'm pretty sure I've done a video on it before, but you know, he he does a really good job of of creating like these storytelling moments in his work uh, that really draw you into it and they make you wonder like what is this story about? I don't know what this book cover was for. If you if you know, please drop a comment and let me know because I have absolutely no idea. But it's very intriguing to look at because it, it gets you thinking about like what the story would be. Now in terms of the design elements, there's there's quite a few design elements that are happening here that are really interesting. Um, it's, it's really interesting that he has this very strong light shape up here. And if we put it into grayscale, you know, we see this very strong light element here. And so he's wanting us to look up here. But he not only wants us to look up here, he wants us to look where that light is going, which is our main focal point, which is all of this. And with that light and with the shadow that's casted on his back, and the way it is that he drew the silhouette of this arch, the way it frames him, all of that is intentional. All of that is intentional. He's using this, this empty space in this arch in order to frame his focal point, which is this character. And really it feels like the, the focal point or the story being told here is not so much the mummies, but it's this character's relation to the light that's coming through. It almost seems like he's in some sort of a hell landscape, and yet there is light, and the light is coming in, uh, like salvation is coming in, and, and saving him from whatever it is that he's in. Uh, now if I drop this, if I take away my, my draw layer, and I drop the grayscale, uh, we can see that it's very much in a monocolor scheme, except for him, which is another way it is that you draw attention to the focal point, is that you let everything else drop away in terms of color, you keep everything the same color. So he has oranges, but he also has like these browns in there. And even the mummies, you know, they're, they look like they're more of a light orange uh, color. And then he has these, um, you know, these darker blues on the figure. So anyway, guys, uh, that's what I got for you today. I hope you guys get something out of this. Uh, if there's a topic it is that you would like for me to cover on my YouTube channel, please feel free to check it out. I'm an illustrator and a comic artist. I've got a couple of free comics that you can check out in the description box below if you'd like. And uh, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to look at my work or to look at this tutorial. And you can check out my work in the description box below along with my social media links. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks and take it easy.